we already have a number of videos on this channel that talk about individual components of TikTok advertising. You can check out this one right here that talks about all the different targeting options available on the TikTok ads platform. And if you're just getting started and you don't have your account set up fully yet, you can also check out this video that'll show you how to set up your events and conversion tracking for your TikTok ads account. We even have a video that walks you through the start to finish setup of a slightly less utilized campaign objective, which is lead generation. And you can check that out right here. But I realized that most advertisers probably utilize conversion objective campaigns on almost all social ads platforms. So in this video, I want to do the same thing as we did with that lead generation video and walk you start to finish through creating and launching a TikTok conversion focused campaign. As I mentioned in the intro, we have a number of videos already put together for the TikTok ads platform. And in an effort to keep this video from being three hours long, anytime I come across a portion of the campaign setup that we already have a video for, I'll give a short overview here, but I'll direct you to the other video that we already have available on the channel if you want to learn more about it. When you first log into TikTok, it's going to drop you on this dashboards page. So to create a new campaign, we need to come over to the campaigns tab. Now we're in a section that looks a bit more like an ad manager rather than just a dashboard overview. So let's come down here and click create campaign. More often than not, the first thing TikTok is going to ask you is if you want to use simplified mode or custom mode. Simplified is an experience that's taken a few pieces away that is designed to help you spend less time creating and managing campaigns and getting back to running your business. Now, while this sounds really useful and can be helpful to people who are just genuinely overwhelmed with the number of different things you can do through online advertising, this is the Paid Media Pros channel, and we like to call ourselves pros, so we're not going to take the simplified route. In the custom mode, you get full control of the experience that's perfect for all advertising objectives. So let's click this. And then the first thing we get to do is choose our advertising objective or our campaign objective as it would be referred to in other platforms. As I mentioned in the intro, this is going to be a conversion focused campaign. But if you're interested in any of the other advertising objectives on TikTok, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. For now, I'm just going to click conversions and it'll scroll down to the settings section. The first thing we get to do is choose a campaign name. I do not intend on saving this campaign by the end of it, so I'm not going to give it a name but there will be a default campaign name that always starts with the advertising objective and then the campaign ID number. My guess is that most of you will not be able to remember that 202-208-190-81119 is a specific campaign compared to anything else. So you probably need to give it a more descriptive name than this original placeholder. The next section is choosing special ad categories. This is going to be extremely similar to Facebook. If you're advertising in anything in the housing, employment, or credit space, you need to declare that at the beginning or risk having your ad be rejected and have your ad account put in limbo because you did not declare those. These are highly regulated areas and need to follow all special ad category policies. The next setting is if you want to create a split test. We do not want to do that here, but at some point in the future, we will likely put together a video on how to create a TikTok ad split test. But for now, suffice to say, they do have that capability on the TikTok platform. The last two settings are going to have to do with your budget. First is you can turn on campaign budget optimization, which effectively means that you're going to be able to share your budget across the different ad groups within your campaign. So if you turn this on, you can only choose from a daily budget and that budget has to be at least $50. So there is a minimum on a campaign level budget utilizing campaign budget optimization in TikTok. The bid strategy is going to be set for lowest cost and you cannot change this. And you'll notice that all ad groups under the current campaign must all use the same optimization goal, which we'll get to when we get into the ad group level setup. For now, I'm going to turn this off. So it'll bring back the campaign budget. So you can click on set campaign budget, which basically means that on a daily basis or a lifetime basis, you only want it to spend a certain amount of money. Once that campaign spends that amount of money within that day or that lifetime, it will turn off. For now, I'm going to turn this off and then click continue. Now we're into the ad group level setup. And just like with the campaign, the first thing you get to do is give it a name. And then second, you get to choose your promotion type, whether you're trying to drive users to an app or to a website. This will be different based on every business, but I think the more common one and the one I'm going to use today is going to be website. 
Once you select website, we need to choose which TikTok pixel we want to use for the account. There's only one set up in this account. I'm sorry, it's blurred out, but we have one. And then next we need to choose the optimization event. Remember all ad groups within this campaign need to use the same optimization event. Unfortunately, since this account has not been robustly built out just yet, there aren't any events. We're gonna see how far TikTok lets me get in this ad setup, but there's probably gonna be some errors because I do not have an optimization event selected. All of this is going to be if your goal is to send people to an external website, meaning you wanna send them to a landing page, your homepage, what have you. But another option is to send somebody to a TikTok instant page. For now, I'm gonna use this because we don't have any events set up. So ideally this will let me continue moving forward. But with an instant page, you also get to choose what your optimization event is. Currently the only one available is click button. So I'm gonna leave it as that one. The next section that we get is to talk about the placements within the TikTok platform. Automatic placements is gonna be the default, just like it would be on the Facebook ads platform. But you can choose to select individual placements, whether it's TikTok, the newsfeed, or Pangle. I talk a little bit more about the placement targeting options in the targeting options video. First, I wanna talk about a couple of the advanced settings that live under this section. First is gonna be user comments. This is going to decide whether or not you want to allow users to comment on your ads. TikTok recommends keeping this on, that way they can do that and it'll help you achieve more impressions and conversions, or so they say. But it also mentions that you can hide, pin, and reply to comments using your comment management tools. And then there's a link that you can go follow if you wanna learn how to do that. The next is video download. Basically, do you want users to be able to download your ad as a video from TikTok or not? The default is going to be on and that they can do that, but if you don't want them to, just click the toggle off to the left. And the last is going to be a Pangle block list. Think of this as a negative placement for Google ads or a block list for Facebook ads. If you don't want your ad to show on undesired media placements on Pangle, you can upload a block list to make sure that your ads won't show there. But TikTok does mention that this will decrease the reach of your campaigns. And again, they've got a little link there if you wanna learn more about that. The next section we get to choose the creative type, even if we're not gonna set up the creative just yet. At this point, we just get to choose if we wanna use automated creative optimization, where we can create multiple combinations of creative assets, including videos and text, and then ad delivery will be automated to show the audience the combinations that will most likely maximize your results. This is a pretty easy toggle on or off. The only thing to note is that if you turn this on, you cannot turn it off later on. So once you've created your ad group, the setting cannot be changed. You also cannot turn it on if you started your campaign with it off. You would then have to create a new ad group and opt into or out of automated creative optimization. The next section is going to be around all of your targeting. Who are you going to reach on the TikTok platform and how can you find your specific customer base? I'm not gonna go over custom targeting just yet. First, I wanna talk about automatic targeting. If you opt into this, you'll notice that pretty much all of the other options went away. The only thing you get to choose is location and languages. This is effectively if you are going to be running broad targeting on Facebook, you're going to be using only the machine learning from TikTok that will then try and get you the best results possible based on your campaign objective. There's a little bit more information about that up here. It says TikTok will optimize your targeting settings according to your advertising objective, the content of your ad, and your past campaign data, as well as other influencing factors. I would recommend using automatic targeting only if you have a lot of conversion performance and you've already seen good performance on TikTok with custom targeting because you're leaving everything in TikTok's machine learning hands. But if you haven't done that, or you don't fall into that category of having enough conversions, custom targeting is gonna be the right way for you to go. I'm gonna give a very quick overview of each of these different pieces, but if you want a more in-depth rundown of the targeting options, as well as some of the placement insights that I referred to earlier, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. The first section is demographics. We still retain the location and language targeting that we would have been able to set with the automated targeting. But after that, we've got a number of other factors as well. So we can utilize gender, whether male, female, all. We have some preset age ranges that we can choose from. And then next within the United States, you get to choose household income. You can choose based on zip codes and it'll be top five, top 10, up to top 50%. Next, you can choose audiences. These are going to be the audiences that you create and you can opt into including them or excluding these. And you'll notice when I opened this up, it included all audiences, whether they are custom or a lookalike. The next section is going to be about interests and behaviors. 
So here we start to get into the interests, whether they are general or purchase interests that certain users have on the platform. So if I open this up, you get to choose general or purchase and then basically just get to start choosing from this drop-down list what people are interested in, whether they're interested in financial securities, all sorts of different things. And then you can target people based on the behavior that they exhibit on TikTok based on these last three sections here. How do people interact with certain videos? What are they doing? Are they watching things? Are they clicking on them? How are they interacting with certain creators? How are they interacting with certain hashtags? All of these have different targeting options available based on the type of content, but also the type of engagement or behavior that people are exhibiting on the platform. The last piece that lives within the targeting options section is going to be device. And there's quite a lot that goes into the device targeting options. First, you get to choose the operating system, whether Android or iOS. Since TikTok is just an app, there is no web. It's only going to be with on these two main providers. You can then choose the OS version. This is very important if you have an app that only is supported on a certain level or above within an operating system. For example, many apps that I have operate only on iOS 13 or higher. So if you wanna exclude users who have anything at 12 or lower, this is where you would do it. You can also target people based on their device model. So if you only want to target people on an iPhone or an iPhone 13 or whatever Android runs on, you can do that. You then get to choose the connection type. If people need to be on Wi-Fi, 2, 3, 4, or 5G. That 5G option is relatively recent because I remember last time we did this video, it only went up to 4G. So they've expanded the coverage with the changing tech available. And then lastly, you can choose the carriers, whether somebody uses AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and you get to choose the device price. How expensive was that device? Which seems like a really specific type of targeting, but for those of you out there that this resonates with, you'll probably be pretty happy about it. Next, we get to choose the budget and schedule before moving on to bidding and optimization. So we get to choose the daily budget or a lifetime budget at the ad group level. And then you'll notice that the daily budget has to be at least 20. So you remember if I turned on campaign budget optimization, the daily budget had to be 50. At the ad set level, daily budget only has to be 20. So if you only have a small budget, it's probably best for you to utilize daily budgets at the ad group level to make sure you don't have to spend upwards of $50 a day. You then get to choose your ad schedule. So you can choose to let ads run continuously from the time that it starts, which is effectively just an evergreen campaign with no end date. But if you do want to have your campaigns run only for a certain number of days, you can choose the start date so you can schedule it in advance. And then you can choose the end date so that your campaign will turn off on a certain date. So if you have a specific event you're trying to promote, or if you're only running a sale for a certain amount of time, you can schedule it so that your ads will automatically pause and you don't have to remember to do it manually. Lastly, we get to choose day parting. You can have your ads run all day, basically 24 seven, or you can select specific times. You get to choose if you want your ads to run from Wednesday at 1 a.m. to 2 p.m. or any other days, and then you can clear them if you need to. So it's very customizable when your ads are running and who you're going to be targeting within the TikTok ads platform. And then the last section is going to be bidding and optimization. Again, we need to make sure that we have the same optimization goal here. We're focused just on conversion, though you can optimize for a click if you want to. And if you have a TikTok pixel with events that are set up with specific values associated with them, you can also opt into value, which would kind of be the equivalent of revenue for different e-commerce campaigns. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as conversion. You get to choose your bid strategy, whether you want it to be lowest cost, which is going to be the default, or cost cap, meaning you keep your average cost per conversion version around or lower than your bid. That's the goal, but it's not guaranteed. If you have very strict targets that you need to hit, you could start off with cost cap. And then as you see good performance, you might adjust to lowest cost. But I'll be honest, most of the campaigns that I run, whether they're on TikTok or Facebook, really just lean into this lowest cost bidding strategy because it tends to work best. Down in the advanced settings section, scroll down a little bit, you can see that there is a impression as a billing event and the delivery type is standard. I can't choose either of those, I can't edit them, so I'm not really sure why it's there, but if you're curious about your billing event or delivery type, you can find them there. Now let's move into the last section, which is going to be the ad creative itself. We start off by giving our creative a name, just like we did with ad group and campaign. Next, you get to determine the identity that the ad is going to be coming from. You can use a TikTok account to deliver Spark ads, which means that you can use the posts from a TikTok account as ads, which will help you build the account presence, increase engagement, and achieve better long-term results, or so says TikTok. 
You can also set a custom identity, which will basically mean that you can choose an alias that you want to advertise from rather than advertising from a page specifically. Once you've determined who the ad is going to come from, we get to determine the ad details themselves. First, we get to choose the format, whether it's single video or collection ads. And then we get to upload the creative itself and any of the supporting text. We plan on putting together another video in the future around ad formats, so I'm not going to go super in depth here, but we can talk about each of these little sections just a little bit. So for a video, you would upload the creative, you could find it in the library, or you could create a video directly in the TikTok ads platform. And then you would add in your supporting text. You could add any sort of interactive add-ons. You can create them directly in here, or you can choose them from your library of assets you've already created. And then you get to choose the destination page. If you'll remember at the ad set level, I chose that we were going to use an instant page so that I didn't have any errors. And now is the time where we need to actually make that. I can either create one here or I can choose from the library if I already have some associated with my account. You can then choose your call to action, whether you want it to be dynamic and let TikTok select that for you. Or if you want to choose from a standard list and you can choose from learn more, shop now, sign up, all of the classics that we've come to know from all the other social media platforms already. Next is this checkbox down here. And by checking this box, you agree for your ad and the associated performance metrics of the campaign to be displayed in the TikTok for Business Creative Center. And if you don't know what that is, you can click the link here and it'll take you to this page. Trends, ads, and insights that elevate your whole creative game. And there is a ton of different insights and image ads and all sorts of things that are associated here that you can see within the accounts. So if you want your ads to potentially be part of this public domain that shows different performance metrics for your ads, you can opt into that box. But if you're trying to be a little bit more secretive, maybe you leave this box unchecked. The last piece is going to be your tracking options. You get to choose the pixel that you want to use. So again, for this one, I'm utilizing the TikTok instant page. So the pixel is going to be this on-site custom instant page because there is no third party page that they're going to. But if you did use a website and you were sending somebody to an external site, you could add in any of your UTM parameters, any of the additional pieces to your destination URL that you would want to use right in this section here. And then lastly, you can use impression tracking and click tracking URLs, depending on what software you use for your company to track performance of your campaigns. Once all of your assets are filled out on this page for your ad, all you would need to do is click submit and your campaign would start running based on the schedule and budget that you put in the previous few sections. Since I didn't really fill anything out, I'm not going to click submit because that would just be a waste of money and there would be a lot of errors that would pop up. The good news is that for the most part, setting up a conversion focused campaign in the TikTok ads manager feels very similar to what it does in pretty much any other digital advertising platform. We've got some settings that live only at the campaign level. We set all of our targeting and some different optimization goals at the ad group level. And then we get to customize our creative to present our brand to the user exactly as we would like in a number of different formats. The biggest thing with any conversion focused campaign is to make sure that you have enough conversion volume associated with it to really lean into the digital ads platforms, machine learning, so they can optimize toward your campaign conversion goals and make sure that you're getting the performance out of it that you need. Hopefully this overview has been helpful. If nothing else, we at least refer you to some other videos that we've got that can expand on a couple of topics. But just like always, if I miss something or if you have additional follow up questions, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.